not too many people can do a backflip uh, back uh, or double or the twisting. We are special. <laughs> Gymnastics with people, we are special. Hey everyone, welcome to The Rose Show, where we are going to be bringing you the ups and downs of life on the road as an acrobatic influencer. We'll be bringing on guests that are leaders of the industry so you can hear their stories and learn from their ups and downs. As I travel the world to new exciting places, I'll be having the hard discussions with our guests and touch on a wide range of topics from athlete development, business of sport, social media, and even philosophy of sport and give you a full global perspective of freestyle acrobatics. And this week, we have three-time Olympic medalist and complete powerhouse Marion Dragulescu to talk to us about his training in vault mechanics. We will hear Marion's passion for the sport and a few thoughts on proper training mechanics. All right, guys, let's go. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another show. This week, we have one of the greatest gymnasts out there, especially from Europe, multiple world championship titles, three Olympic medals, and a complete powerhouse and a very own skill on vault. Marion Dragulescu, how are you doing? Thank you for coming on our show. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I am doing uh, great. Awesome, man. So how did you get into it? Obviously, you're, you're from Romania and you started as a kid. How did that kind of develop into uh, what you, where you are now? Uh, first year was uh, more like for fun, you know, just uh, playing around, but then I start to uh, make those elements very good. Mm -hmm. And from then, uh, from there, I started to, to think about uh, winning medals in competition. Why not? Why not? And yeah, and so this was uh, my beginning in this um, sport. I loved uh, gymnastics from the moment I saw the gym. We have a very big and beautiful gymnastics gym in uh, Bucharest. We have a foam pit. We have uh, a lot of trampolines and everything. Was like running every day and playing, and it was fun. So is that what you liked about it as a kid? Just the the freedom to move your body around and to flip and flop and jump into a pit and just that more kid stuff? Is that what really it was about? Yes, and uh, you have no limits in gymnastics. You can try whatever you want to try. In and also in the safe mode because you have. Uh, mats, you have a foam, pit, everything. Now, when you first started, though, if I remember correctly, you were born in 1980. Did they have all that high-tech equipment that you see nowadays, or is it a little bit more low-key? Uh, low a little bit more low-key, but uh, we had uh, enough, enough to try anything uh, that uh, we wanted to try. That is awesome. Yeah, nowadays these kids have the most crazy stuff, you know, and uh, the most springy boards and uh, extra springs on the actual vaults and bars and stuff now. So it's a whole new, it's a whole new game now. Yeah, the important thing is because uh, you need to have a passion for gymnastics. You, you really need to like this sport uh, in order to, to stay many years and why not to be a professional and to win uh, a lot of uh, medals? If you don't like, if this sport is not the number one in your life, <laughs> uh, you, can, uh, you cannot go uh, too, much, too much years and uh, in the professional way, you cannot be one of the best. Well, now, when you talk about passion, do you believe that the passion is in the sport of the movement, the actual passion of movement, or the actual sport competition structure and getting medals? Because you said you want a bit of both. Do you need a balance or one more than the other? Before you start competing, you need to train. So you need to have the same passion also in training. Okay, so you, for you, it's if you want to train, then the competition is just next sort of way to show that you train. So you really got to enjoy the training not the competing. 
of course, enjoying enjoy the training and also enjoy the competition because with uh, a lot of adrenaline over there and uh, when you win a medal, you know, and especially when uh, they sing your anthem, you know, your national song, it's, uh, you feel very good. You feel like on top of on the world, you know, when you are world champion, you think uh, that um, you work very hard, but now everything turns out very good. You are very happy, fulfilled, everything uh, deserved, all that work. So it's like, it's, it's like closure. It's like after all that, because you never really know if you're going to get it. You bust your butt 30 hours at least a week. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, I could have an issue. And then finally it's done. And then it's like, ah, oh. is it more relief or is it um, pride? Is it relief or pride? Maybe a bit of both? Yeah, I think a little bit of both, yes, because uh, you never know what uh, could happen in the competition, you know? yourself but then put anyway, it the train we we play gymnastics is the most uh, complex sport from uh, all of them you, we can do a lot of uh, tricks not too many people can do a back flex, uh, back flip or, or double or the twisting we are special <laughs> gymnastics uh, people we are special well, it's interesting you say, I always liked gymnastics and I always thought that it was at least different. I don't know how, because I know if you go to a soccer player or a football player or something, they'll say, no, we're the best. But I, I always looked at gymnastics as probably the only sport or at least the best sport for human movement and just spatial awareness and knowing where you are and being able to move the body in ways that other people just don't understand that is even possible. And it's more of a celebration of the capabilities of the human body than it is anything else, really. Yeah, we have in gymnastics, we have uh, uh, power, explosive, we have strength, we have equilibrium, we have elegant, we have everything. That's interesting. So, okay, if I had to compare it to decathlon, decathlon being like uh, javelin and uh, I think there's high jump, oh, there's like 10 of them. I don't know they all, which ones they are, but they would say like historically from a uh, Olympic perspective, that is the world's best athlete is the one who wins the decathlon. Would you argue that and say, no, 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 it's the world, the world champion for gymnastics? Uh, it's a different type of sport in decathlon. Uh, you need to have um, a big uh, stamina, if you understand me. In gymnastics, you don't need to have that uh, big stamina because uh, in gymnastics, one exercise, it's like one minute, it's uh, short. In decathlon, it, it's more longer, the, the exercise, the effort. So yeah. it's different kind of sport. Yeah, it's more glycolysis and ATP, PC. It's all more quick power-based stuff. And uh, obviously, you are a powerhouse with your vault and everything like that. So I remember watching in, uh, when I was 14 years old, 2004, and you were, uh, you were battling it out with Kyle Schufelt on floor and on vault. Can you give us a bit of an insider perspective on your thoughts about, like, why, did, why are you a vault specialist? You're a powerhouse. Was that because you're training? was more geared towards vaults or are you just naturally a bit more of a powerhouse? I think uh, I am a natural, uh, uh, natural uh, uh, power explosive guy and uh, I like uh, adrenaline and those two events, floor and vault, uh, feed me with uh, much adrenaline and not from like uh, the other apparatus, you know, like uh, pommel holes, uh, rings. There is not such uh, such much uh, adrenaline over there. And also not uh, too much explosive uh, apparatus like uh, floor and vault. Well, yeah, because like high bar is more about swinging and timing and stuff like that. Rings is more isometric kind of holding and showing control. And vault and floor, uh, more vault obviously is just hit it as hard as you can and just smash that and that's that's everything your... happens in two seconds <laughs> two seconds yeah it's very quick two seconds yeah that's it's, awesome it's... 
So did you do special training for Vault or was it the same as everything else? You're an all round guy and everyone gets like an hour a day sort of thing. Or did you put special time into Vault? Uh, now, yes, because uh, I doing now only Vault. I preparing for the Olympic Games. I, I am already qualified. But until two years ago, I used to do all around. I am um, all around the European champion in 2004. So I, I used to do six events all the time. And now, so like you said, one hour each uh, apparatus. And now was that, was that what your training was like generally? One hour every day on one hour of everything every day? Something like that, yeah. Between That's 30 minutes and one hour every, every each apparatus. And when you were a kid, how, when you were, when did you start? How old were you? When you seven, started? Seven years, seven and a half, something like that. Seven and a half. And how many hours did you train at the start? Like, what was that like? Did they just pick you out of the group and say, you're now doing 30 hours? Or did you slowly build it up? How did that go? Uh, one coach came to my school and uh, that's uh, the way I come to gymnastics, you know? And then we started, I think, uh, twice a week training. And then uh, I remember we did uh, five times a week, only one train, training until uh, 15 years old. And then I go to the junior Olympic team. And since 15 years old, I do two trainings a day, six uh, days a week. Wow. Okay. So that's a lot of hours. Yes. Yeah, that's that's what it is, man. And I, I talk to some of these young kids, and they don't realize that's what it takes. You know, they see they see like all you kind of guys doing the big stuff and everything, and then they don't realize though. Ever since you're 15 years old, it's a full time job. Uh, yes, but uh, as a child, as a child is is enough for one one train a day. So they they need to have fun. They need to learn new skills. They need to have faith in them to be courageous, to try uh, new and difficult skills. They need uh, to pay attention to the details, to the technique, to the execution, because the technique uh, help, helps you to do uh, skills correctly and also to update skills. Let's say if you do like, uh, uh, double back tuck if you do it correctly technique you can learn a double pike or double layout the same with the twist you do one twist correctly it's easy for you to go to the next step two twists and so on if you don't do it correctly it's very difficult for you to how do you say to improve the the skill yeah, because it all builds on itself. It's not like when you do a triple back, it's somehow magically different than a backflip. It's just more of the same thing. And you just build it up over time with power as you grow and more technical awareness and all that. So it's, it's, not, like a, it's not like these skills are all different. They're actually a lot similar, just sort of built on each other. And that's why you really need that good base when you're a young kid. And I think that's why you definitely want to play around. Like you said, get the passion for it, play, learn how your body moves naturally before you streamline it into competition. Uh, yes. And uh, one more thing. I saw many elements in gymnastics do, uh, do it in uh, different, different uh, techniques. So it's not one technique for everyone. Every, uh, every athlete can build his, his own uh, technique, you know. Some people, they are like very skinny. They have a, another technique. Some people, they are like, I don't know, more, uh, how do I say it, more, more massive. I'm not, I'm not looking like a Chinese, like this. I'm a little bit uh, heavier. You know, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I need to, I need to, um, um, how do you say? Adapt. To adapt, yeah. I adapt, adapt the technique 
on my body. So I uh, I learn a lot of uh, uh, a lot of things about uh, technique and um, about myself watching the the other gymnasts how they are doing it, you know, and I. I take a, a few things from one gymnast and then I took a few things uh, from another gymnast. I tried on myself the techniques, the a lot of uh, skills. And then I keep what uh, was good for me and uh, who, was, uh, who are helping me to improve, improve myself. And in, in this way, I, I can uh, go to... Uh, to the next level that's that's very cool because you know i and I, I tell me if you have seen this at least from my perspective gymnastics there's a lot of coaches that they uh they look at biomechanics sometimes as a it's a it's a unified one thing this is the way to do it but in reality the biomechanics only works for your body it's biomechanics right so if your body is different then therefore you're gonna have different levers different weights like you said chinese versus some huge massive sumo wrestler you know these are all going to require different applications even though the underlying structure of the skill is the same the skill is a skill but the way you actually have to apply it it really matters what the body type of that athlete is yes yes that yeah. that is uh, correct. Also, you know, I you mentioned it uh, before. Uh, I invented an element in gymnastics. It calls Dragulescu. On on vault, there is a very nice and beautiful jump, and uh, there there are gymnasts now in the world who jump uh, my my vault, Dragulescu vault, and the technique it's uh, it's not the same. It's a bit different from Russia, from uh, I don't know China. From they they adapt themselves mm -hmm. and they uh, manage to find their the the, the technique that help uh, helping them to do that. Yeah. And uh, one one more thing, when I was uh, a kid, I learned twisting. You know, like uh, uh, a full layout with uh, one turn, right? And um, when I when I was young, they always told us arms up, you know, and then here to twist. But nowadays, uh, I saw in a gymnastics competition, uh, Japanese who twist uh, four four twist four and a half. So they uh, they adapt a new technique. So they don't uh, go with uh, arms up here and then twist they go directly twisting so you see it's different technique but they adapt to twist more for their body type and yeah this is uh, yes it's very interesting it is, you know, and I'm not sure if you've seen some of the new freestyle guys. They don't have their arms up at all, um, and they're adapting to garden trampolines and trampoline parks that don't usually have as good equipment. And they're able, they're starting with their arms down and swing them into a full full or swing them into a quintuple full or whatever it is. And they are literally inventing new techniques because they're yeah. not controlled by the uh the culture that says you know arms always up right because i was taught the same thing arms up and drop the arm to twist you know that's what they always tell us right but these guys are saying i don't need to do that i can do back full with my hands behind my back you know what i mean and then that just throws all of your preconceived notions right out the window and says holy crap anything is possible i just got to figure out what works for me yeah you need to have your mind open and uh, uh, to try also new new techniques new new skills maybe work better for what you learned before about any other skill i agree 100 percent. you got to explore and i you know I, I i'm hoping that the culture of gymnastics pushes forward with a bit more exploring rather than you know do this then this then this which is kind of still the norm because they still think that's the only way to do it but the reality is if you can explore and try new things you're gonna you know, come back let's say to the nest with new information new things and you don't know how it's all going to work but you might stumble across something that's just amazing you know 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that is really cool. So tell us about your vault. So you okay, the Dragulescu, it's a handspring double front half out. And uh, so how did you go up process of making it an actual name? Like what's the rules for that to name it? You know what I mean? You need to be the first gymnast who present that element in uh, international competition, in official FIG international uh, competition. That idea came to me in uh, 1999 a hundred years back and uh, came to me because uh, I used to fall down many, many times in many competitions because I did a, a jump with a double front and uh, the landing, I, I never was able to see the landing. So in competition with uh, too much uh, energy and adrenaline, you know, emotion, I uh, always open too early or too late, so always fall, falling down. So in one day, I I was uh, thinking, why not turn to do uh, with half turn will be more difficult, but it uh, I will be able to see the landing and not fall again anymore. So this is the way I invented that uh, that jump. That is cool. So it wasn't like, hey, I just want to add more. You were actually thinking of it as a safety maneuver as way as it's a kind of a paradox. So you're like, okay, I'm going to make it harder so I can make it easier. You know, and yeah. that, that's smart. Very smart. You know, yeah, it, it still is uh, one of the difficult jump in, in competition. Uh, only the, the best vaulters, they can uh, still doing the, that uh, vault. Uh, when I started to jump this vault, I uh, used to jump on the, uh, you know, the old uh, Pamel vault. No, no, no Pamel. Horse, horse, long the horse. horse. Long one, yeah, yeah. The yeah, narrow yeah. one. I hate uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> I used to jump on that uh, horse. So did I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hated and, that. Uh, and uh, seven years, seven years, nobody... Uh, was trying to jump my my vault in competition nobody but after seven years they start to uh, find the secret and the technique you know and they are start to jumping in these days a lot of um, gymnasts who, uh, who goes into the final in any competition in, in best eight people in the world some of them jump uh, the rest of all. So there is still one of the uh, most difficult jump in the world after 1999. That means after 21 years, that's it's still one of the hardest. Uh, that's jump. pretty cool. So what is that technique? Is it, is it like the angle of bouncing off the vault? Is it just pure power? Is it heel drive? Is it shoulder bump? What, what's the the magical secret it's uh, the power and the explosive first of all and the second of all you need to uh, to do in to do it in the same time uh, feet with uh, hands pushing the but it, it, it's very sensitive because it you have a lot of speed and you need to control that part when uh, you can uh, jump from hands and kick with the feet, you know, in the Perfect. same time. Same time, yeah. That's so. It's that same perfect time. timing within that oh, yeah. zero zero one of a second that your hands are going to bounce with perfectly, you know, straight as you can be with that back extension a little bit at that perfect moment, synchronized to get that perfect bump. Exactly, exactly. If you're doing like I don't know, one millisecond later the, the feet or the, the arms bouncing, it's not the same. It, it, it's changing everything. <laughs> if, you, if your heel drives a little late for the shoulder bump, what happens? Do you just not get the lift and you go forward and rotate but not go up? Or is it the opposite? Yes, yes it's something like that. You, you, you will not get... Uh, you will not... Um, 
uh, obtain that uh, high that you need to twist and uh, and then if it's the other way around and your feet are too low before the bump, then you will go straight up, but you won't rotate. Of course, yes, something like that. So you're trying to find right in that happy medium, right on that one moment. Yeah, that and is- from there also you can, you need to, uh, to develop more difficult balls, you know? Depends on the timing. If you, maybe if you uh, want to do it uh, more difficult, you need to move that position from here, a little bit here, you know, but it's the same timing, but a little bit more earlier. That means you can go maybe higher and maybe faster the rotation. But it, it, is, it is pretty difficult, but it's not impossible. No, oh, obviously not. You've been doing it for many years and been kicking butt with it. So, uh, yeah. And I've been, oh man, that'd be perfect. When you're doing the vault though, um, when do you know if it's going to be a good one? Do you know right when you hit the vault or do you, is it when you're in the air or when you land? When do you know? When you take off from the, uh, from the table. Right, when you hit from that table, table, you know if you hit that yeah. line. Yes, yes. And do you see anything in the air when you're going or it's just? No, it, it's too fast. We're spinning too fast. It's like in one second, we do almost triple. It's like two, uh, two rotation and a half and then turn. It's too quickly. Do you, before you turn, do you spot the ground and then turn? Like in trampoline, we will obviously spot the ground. We have a bit more time than you do, but will you spot it or is that automatic as well? It's more like automatically. You can spot them, but not very often. Most of the time you spot them like in in the split of a second, just before your feet touching the the landing. But is, is enough also like this because the other there is other also other balls who cannot uh, spot the landing not even the i don't know too much twisting you know those ones with like your chenko three and a half three whatever um all of a sudden you're twisting like this you can't see that yes yes so why did you pick um the dragulescu to be your kind of claim to fame why why not do uh, your chenkos or souks or something else i've tried uh, all the jumps in the world i do double back uh, twisting uh, triple twist uh, i do a lot of i think all the the jumps in the world but this one dragulescu it happens to uh, to have a very good technique and uh, to to be able to do a, a clean jump and also a clean landing so I stick with that one. And the second one, because we need to have uh, two bolts, I keep changing them. But in the, in the past years, I stick with uh, Lixiao Peng Vault. I don't know if you, if you know that vault. There is a Chinese who invent that vault. And there is a Randolph before a springboard. There's a Randolph. You kick the springboard with the back uh, to the table. You turn, half turn, uh, bounce with your hands the the table, and then you do like uh, one layout with double and a half twist. Yeah, like a half in. We call in trampoline. We call it a half in Randy off in a sense. I don't know. It yeah. doesn't quite translate, but uh, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's I a- don't know too much. No, I don't know too much English, so excuse me. No, no, no. That's it's. I, they call what you're saying. Um, I just I'm translating for trampoline, and just some of our audience members are gonna not know all the names and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to kind of translate for everybody. Uh-huh. But uh, it's it's very interesting. And you had a you had a bit of a stumble on your second vault in 2004, if I remember correctly. So you 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 nailed the Dragulescu. Everyone thought you yeah, this guy's gonna just kill it. And then you had some trouble with the twisting. What what happened there? Uh, in 2004, I I didn't have the 
both my two volts, I didn't have the best uh, start value, you know. In the second uh, jump, I had uh, more, uh, not such a big start value, you know, less start oh, value. Yeah. Yes, not, not so difficult. And there was four gymnasts with the, the better start value than me. So I tried to risk uh, a week before I tried to improve my regular goal and to do it a triple t twist. But what happened in the final was uh, from uh, those four gymnasts who has a uh, higher um, start value than me, they were all falling down. And in that moment, I was thinking it's, it's, uh, ha it has no sense for me to risk to do triple twist, you know. And I was thinking I will do it that ball with the uh, with lower start value and it will be enough for me. But because in the last week I trained triple twist, the technique is different from the two and a half twist. So something was like mixing. I tried to do double twist with the technique of uh, triple twist and something in the air. I realize in the air, I will not, uh, it will not be a, a good uh, jump. Uh, it's too bad, man. It's, 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 it's a tough one. But you said that the technique is different. So how is it, is it different? Is it a different takeoff? Is it a different hand position? A different, what is it between the, the double twist and the triple twist? Uh, in triple twist, uh, we, will, we, we do triple twist from, uh, so running, kick the springboard, and uh, we go into the table like this, like rondo, right? Right. Like rondo. Okay. So, when you try to do triple twist, you go into the table like this. Don't let the feet to... Uh, go up too much. Up, yes. Don't let uh, your feet to go up too much. You stop here, you bounce, from your, you bounce from your hand, and you're twisting like this. When you're doing um, two twists and a half, you need uh, for the feet to be up here, not here, not here, up here. So you get it uh, for you to gain more uh, rotation. Okay, I get it. So for us, it's like that in trampoline where when I'm doing, do a, let's say a triple twist, uh, like a backwards triple full, um, I will be thinking a little bit more about going up so that I can uh, have time to wrap. But when I do it, you know, just a double twist, I'm thinking a little bit more, even slower. And when it's a back full, I'm thinking even slower. And then when I go to quad twist, quint, and then it's just more twists, drop the arms, more twists, like you said earlier with the, the guys are doing quad fulls now, I, I, I change my technique with the arms. I do back full with arms up, but I'll do quad full, just kind of going right here. Same sort of thing with the vault in its own sort of way. Yeah, you need to stop the rotation or to speed the rotation uh, depends on what uh, skill you want to do it. So more twists means hit lower, so you have more time for the twist. Less twist means yeah. hit a little higher, so that you have a bit more rotation, but you're going to ultimately have less room for twisting. Yes, that's correct. That's perfect. right. Perfect. No, that's, it makes a lot of sense. And um, I, I think there's a lot more intuitiveness in the technique. I, I know People like to get really wrapped up in exactly hand position and exactly this. But I, I think keeping a little bit more open, like, hey, go a little bit lower with the legs or a little bit more, and it's easier for people to understand. And then you can use the analysis afterwards to, you know, nitpick. But when you're going, you can focus on one thing, right? Like when, you, when you're doing your vault, do you just focus on one thing or do you quickly run through all the different scenarios? No, one or two things. One or two things. Uh, especially on vault, I am thinking about to, to kick the springboard in, in a good position because this is also important because if you 
running with uh, the bigger steps, you know, even if it's uh, like this. If you do it like 20 steps, it will be like this. And you can uh, uh, hit the springboard down low or very up on the springboard and there is a difference. Uh, either can uh, throw your hands, uh, throw your feet too fast or too low. And depends on that, you need to adapt in the air to, to bounce uh, more uh, quickly from the hands or to wait a little bit more for the feet to come. So I, I, um, I, I am uh, focused on the, how to kick the springboard with my feet. And then the second, to uh, catch the perfect timing, arms and uh, feet, two things, and then the landing. So there is uh, three, three things that I am uh, thinking. And do you think about those things before and kind of order them? Or are you literally thinking about each one as it's happening through the vault? I am thinking about, uh, I don't know, <laughs> all three of them before I start running. And then it, it happens too quickly. But I think the first, the, the first is, is the most important, the second is the little bit less important, and the landing is like in this order. Because if you don't uh, uh, kick the springboard correctly, everything change and you need to adapt in the air and, 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 and everything is not the same. <laughs> so that's, that's it, so you kind of rehearse your, your major points before, then as you're going, you have an order of operations, we'll call it, based on what you know is good. If it's a bad day, you know you're having a, a trouble a run up or you're having a bad bump day or whatever it is, you kind of order it in and then you kind of just follow through with that as fast as you can, but generally probably focusing on the big one of the, of the day. Yes. That is very cool. That's very cool. Do you do any mental training for going for because for vault vault so fast that you, there's no thinking happening so this means that it's a lot faster like rings you can think about one thing at a time and kind of go with it but for vault do you have any special mental exercises that you do that allow you to just kind of bang them out of the park when you need to there is a lot of uh, mental thinking especially on vault because if you do if you want to do the, the most difficult skill in the world to be number one, you need to practice it every day. So you don't have every day uh, so much energy and power and explosive. And a lot of times and you need to be very focused, you know, to, to find the energy and the explosive to do it in, uh, in those days. And then, I, I do a lot of uh, mental thinking and I try to feel about uh, all, the, all the moves from one skill, you know? And I try to improve every move, you know? Let's say uh, this uh, end, this, uh, this, this uh, bouncing from my hands from table. I, I think uh, the possibilities, which possibilities uh, that I have to improve this, uh, this, uh, this move, okay? So I go and try to put a springboard and uh, a high mat and try to do like only this move, only this move. Then I work uh, the landing. I will work only the Then I will work the speed in the air. I jump from trampoline. I do double twist and half turn into the pit. So I take one skill and I uh, cut that uh, skill in four, five moves. And I practice in, uh, in different uh, uh, environment areas 
whatever. That's very cool. So you take the big thing, cut it down, focus, hyper focus on that one thing. Just so again, the brain can only really process one thing at a time, really. So you hyper focus on that thing to make sure that when you are standing at vault ready to go, you're you already know that that's automatic. And then you're able to just kind of focus on the, the feeling of the day rather than the actual technique that hopefully was trained way back in the day. Yes, uh, because of the repetition, it uh, will uh, come automatically. So if we do more repetition, everything will come more automatically. And we can uh, focus only for one thing or two things, not all the, the skill. That's yeah, that's very true. I, I see a lot of coaches and athletes that, you know, he, he, I'm sure you've seen it, you know, don't forget to do this and this and go up and don't rotate too much and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, what? One thing, coach, one thing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's, it's very easy because you know that gymnastics has so many different aspects that you have to manage, you know, so it's very easy to kind of try to tell yourself that you got to remember it all. But the reality is, like you said, that's done in training where you can dissect everything by a competition it's it should have been done if it's not then uh that means you're screwed <laughs> mm -hmm. so when you now take your individual training uh like your segments of your skill how do you build up do you go from one and then add one more to it and do that as a combination or do you block them together how do you then start combining these into the whole thing <clears throat> um I don't know. First, I de dissect the, the, um, the skill, the element. I try to do from uh, the technique. The, I try to have the best technique and to learn the best technique from that uh, element. And then I will do it in the, into, uh, into a safe mode you know, with uh, foam, with uh, mats, and I try it there. And then I will see where do I need to work more for get, uh, getting more higher, uh, for getting more speed in rotation, in, in this way. So then you just sort of kind of go back and forth between your broken up parts, kind of put it all together, see if there's a difference, go back, re-break it down, analyze it again, Rebuild yes. it again, and it's kind of this constant pattern. It's uh, correct, yes. So you're going back and forth, back and forth, and just fiddling ar around with it, for lack of a better term, as you go. Yeah. You are a coach, right? Yes, I am. For, uh, for trampoline, right? Yep. Good. It, it, it's, it's gymnastics family. <laughs> we understand the, the language, yeah. It is. Um, it's, I'm but, sad that trampoline isn't part of gymnastics. I'm sure some people will hate that I said that, but I think it was honestly more politics and stuff like that that got it all sorted out and separated than it was the actual, you know, it'd be, it'd be cool to have like tumbling, um, trampoline, synchro, and then all six events, uh, you know, like a giant decathlon uh, of gymnastics. And you know what I would do just to throw people off? I would make the guys do the girls' events and the girls do the guys' events just to see how that would work out. It will be very dangerous for us on the beam. <laughs> I'm telling you. For us, uh, yeah, boys. I, I think you could learn. I think you could learn, but it, it would be very interesting. So yeah. when, you, when you're doing your, you're breaking up your skills, you're, you're kind of hodgepodging it together, then going back, reanalyzing it, you're obviously doing a lot of conditioning as well, as well as the mental prep. So what kind of conditioning do you do? How long do you condition? Uh, what kind of exercises do you like to do? What do you find works the most? Especially half an hour uh, for each training. Uh, and I, I do exercises with my body most of the time. So I do push-ups on the, the parallel bars push-ups, on the floor push-ups, on handstand push-ups. Then I will, I will do, I don't know how you call it, like planche. Oh yeah, planche, yeah. Planche and yeah. handstand. Planche and handstand, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah. And that's that, shoulder bump, right? What? 
Uh, that's for the shoulder bump, that planche. That's that's the front del deltoid, right? So that's that's all that motion. That's good also for uh, vault, and there is also good for rings. There is also good for parallel bars. Uh, it, it's good. You 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 put uh, power and muscles on your shoulder, and in gymnastics we use it uh, our shoulder in many uh, apparatus, many e events. Right, right. And what else do you do? What about um, running? Do you do lots of sprinting, um, different stuff on treadmills, or just up, up running up mountains? What do you do for leg conditioning to run fast? Um, I do like uh, how this, like uh, small jumping. Uh, no, no small jumping. Uh, jumping with the uh, feet straight. Jumping Bounding. like that. Bounding, boom, boom, lock legs kind of yes. thing. Yes. Also with the uh, knees up here, touch the chest, bouncing. Uh, we have, I do squats. And I do also like uh, running fast, uh, pushing a big mat. Okay, like functional training, they, they would call that. Yes, yes. That's cool. So then, so, but do you have the, the roughly the same conditioning program from month to month or do you always change it up even though you focus on the same muscle groups or how do you, how do you do that? Depends on the, on the period of year, depends on the competition, you know, because uh, before competition, you don't need to do uh, such a big, uh, I don't know, and heavy volume uh, and all that yeah yes you need to be focused and uh, you need to be doing exactly what you need for the, the competition not more because you need to have your body rest and uh, in good power to to compete in the best uh, shape yeah so you're basically doing the periodization and in, in in yeah. English we call periodization, where it's uh, you basically know that you're loading for an event, but when the event comes, the week or two weeks before, you kind of drop it down a little bit, make sure that your body is, it's more of a technical training and balance coordination, mental training, all that. But then right after a competition, you might take a, a week break, um, and then, but you're hitting it hard, and that's where you're doing your max one RM, six RMs, stuff like that. Yes. That is very cool. And what about flexibility? Is, uh, does flexibility take away from your power, do you think? Because there, there is a balance there. If you're too flexible, then you can't contract as fast. But if you're not flexible enough, you could get injuries. What do you do for flexibility? I do two trainings a day, so my body is pretty uh, flexible. Of course, I, I don't uh, have uh, flexibility from when I was seven years old or 10 years old. I, I put uh, more muscles on my back, on my shoulder. I cannot uh, do many flexible things, but for what I need to do, I am still very flexible. So you believe in just optimizing flexibility, make sure that the muscles can work and stretch where they need to. But if you don't need to be in that specific position, like hyper splits or anything like that, then you won't train that. Yes, you, you can. It's difficult to train because if you want to have a, a strong back, especially on, on vault, and you need to uh, quick uh, kick the, with the feet, and there is there two moves in split of a second. Kick and then tuck. And this is very fast. If you have a big mobility and you don't have a lot of muscle on the back, you cannot do this. So if you build big muscles on the back, you cannot do too much flexibility anymore. It makes, it makes a lot of sense. It's what we learned in university and what I've been applying. I, I get my, my athletes, my rule is that you, you have to have flat splits um, and then everything else is just uh, whatever it needs to be for what you do. And that, I leave it at that. Yeah. And what about like cross training? Do you ever like throw in some random 
you know, I used to do uh, some wrestling and stuff like that. And there's coaches that do a little bit of MMA, like mixed martial arts, just to change up the program. Do you ever go out and just change it up and try something different? Mm, we, we used to play football in the gym, you know, uh, just to warm up. Yeah, we used to do that. Uh, yes. What, uh, what, what more? We jump in trampoline. What in can trampoline. you do on a trampoline? What? What can you do on a trampoline? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't do too too much uh, uh, jumping in trampoline and landing in trampoline. Most of the time, I, I jump from the trampoline and landing into the pit. Okay. Indeed. Very good. Well, that's what you need, right? Yes. So I do triple. Front stack, uh, double front stack with uh, two and a half uh, turn, double uh, back with double full, uh, triple twist uh, back, uh, four twist back. That's Play that. everything into the pit. You can jo just jump and you see when you will stop. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun part, man. That's why, that's why I love trampoline. I love the feeling of flying in the air and just there, like when you do just even a crash dive, you just jump and just do like a three quarter flip to your back and just kind of that flying sort of thing. I, I love that. You know what I mean? That's what I love but uh, what do you do with the kids in a trampoline? Because when you jump high, how many meters there? We'll jump like a, well, we measure it in time of flight. So our time of flight, like if you're using a stopwatch, because they normally use a laser system, but our audience won't understand how that works. So if you use a stopwatch and you landed at the bottom of the bed, hit it, you let yourself come up and back down and hit it when you land again, you're about 2.2 seconds, 2.3 seconds. Um, some of the best guys could do maybe 2.4. I'm not sure 100%, but so you're, you're in the air for about, let's on average level, about two seconds. Um, and you know, for the kids, what we do is we don't get them a go that high. You know, we let them play low and we always have a little, a little mat on there and they learn how to roll on their back and land on their stomachs and, you know, little stuff like that. But over time they go a little bit higher and, you know, some coaches will even double bounce the kids a little bit to give them an extra feeling, but those are good coaches that have mats and stuff. So it's very controlled. Um, but you, you do learn to get used to that height. So you, you don't, uh, you never measure the, how many meters you jump? Meters, up? Well, this, the, the way I can tell you um, is that at where I trained, it's about 28 feet. I don't know what that is in meters, like 28 divided by 3.3, you know what I mean? And uh, so that was, was 3.3, it's like seven, eight meters you'd be jumping, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, yeah, so that, that's the top of the trampoline to where your uh, your head would be pretty high and the kids That's they are good. not afraid pardon the kids they are not afraid of the height well no because you you build it up slowly right it's it's not like you drop them from there on the first day you know so the, the kind of the general rule is that you have to build up to that so your body because it's it's like a rhythm think of it like a heartbeat so you know when you're about to land and you're you would actually do drills where have the kids uh, bounce low with their eyes closed so they just feel the trampoline bed and feel when to push and not to push and you actually get a rhythm like uh you know like music like do 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 you get that uh -huh. rhythm it's good. It's good. It's good. and then you build it just build a faster rhythm and kind of like music and it just you build it over time it's it's not it's not like the other way around or anything but i i actually learned to be okay with jumping high because I got double bounce all the time. So I was that bad kid that just wanted to play, uh, even though I was supposed to do routines and all my drills and conditioning, but I just wanted to play on trampoline, you know, and I would find the biggest guy in the gym and he would double bounce me and we just kind of play. And I would always time it so that he would land first and then boing, and then spring. Yeah, we out. play also like that in uh, trampoline. Yeah, yeah. Play. That's, that's the fun part you know and that's I, I think some coaches and athletes just get straight to business too early and that's for me I remember those moments I remember the friends I had when I trained I remember trying to just play with skills I, I don't actually really remember my competitions 
or the conditioning or anything like that. I, I remember the playing and exploring stuff, you know? Yeah, you need to have fun. You, you, you definitely need to have also fun. Yeah, and that, I, I still think that there's a lot of coaches that struggle with finding that happy balance um, where it's either it's all focused because we're here to do a job or we're all just here to play around because there's no structure, you know, and uh, you can't have either one. You need to have them somewhere in the middle. Yeah, yeah. an equilibrium. It's, it's perfect. Yeah, and so we used to do a lot of cross training and fun stuff like that. We like, we played soccer all the time. So my coach would uh, he would line us up, you know, uh, at the start of the day, you shake the coach's hand, kind of thing. I'm sure they don't do that as much anymore, but we used to do it. I had a, I had a, uh, a Russian coach, so that's why. And um, he would give us a task for the day. Okay, Greg, today you're you got to do. Um, blind change or a double back off high bar. This one's a bit younger, you know, and if I were able to do those skills, then I would get, A, get a jujube, like a little candy, you know, and then if everyone got it, then we would all go out back and play soccer, you know, and that was yeah. kind of our fun reward. So I always loved those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good, good. I, I train, train in the same way. The coaches also bring uh, fun and happiness on the on the kids by uh, challenge them to do something and then uh, they offer them candies and everything. Yeah. Well, I remember one okay. time my coach, I had to do, learn how to do two circles and anyone who does gymnastics knows the game from one to two is a big milestone. And uh, yeah. just that, that lean, I couldn't get that lean back onto my right arm, you know, Super. and he's, he sat down one day frustrated that I just sucked so much on pommel. So and that he's, he brings a big, big jar, like a huge jar of candy and says, the whole jar is for you if you can do it by today. And you just sat there, arms folded, waiting for me. And I just over and over and over. I never got it. So then he got all pissed off and took his candy and went home. But uh, I eventually got it. But I thought that was fine. That, that's how they motivated us, you know, back in the day. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. I never got as many okay. candies as everybody else, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, Listen. Uh, huh? I, uh, if you have one more question. Yeah. Because uh, in... Uh, Two, three minutes, I need to go in the, another live session with uh, somebody else. Nope, I understand. Okay, so um, real quick then, uh, before you go, can you tell us uh, a piece of advice that you'd give to any young gymnast that you think uh, is starting gymnastics, thinks that they want to do it? What would be a piece of advice you would give them based on your experiences? First of all, passion. Second of all, to be the best. Because the best give you faith, give you proud, give you courage, give you opportunities, give you a lot of things. And uh, to work. And to work. Work like That's a machine. Right. Work like a machine. Just put in the hours, you know. Two trainings every day for years. Yes. So, passion, right? Be the best and work. Those That's three. It. Love it. Awesome. Marion, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, I really love your philosophy on your training and all that sort of stuff. And hopefully one day we'll get you back on to discuss some other gymnastics-related topics. Yeah, why not? Maybe if I'm visiting uh, Canada again, but in holidays, not competition, I will stop by a gym and maybe we exchange experience. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a few things. There's a big world out there worth exploring and I'm happy to be able to bring these great experiences right to you through this podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast and learned something, please share and take a screen grab of our funky cartoons and hashtag GRT certified for a chance to win a shout out to our community. Also, please leave us a review to be part of helping this information get out into the industry. It's much appreciated. Along with these podcasts, we have a large online content hub that we call the GRT Network with many other interviews and full tutorials and written content discussing everything about acrobatics. We will be constantly growing this archive of videos like a cross between Netflix and Wikipedia for anyone in the acrobatic industry. 
We also have a complete online educational program for athletes of all levels that provides a do-it-yourself pathway to success for any acrobat. Check out our constantly growing library of playlists that will teach you anything from tightening up your social media, to how to get around fear, to even learning all the biology that underlies all your acrobatic skills. We work very hard with our team around the world to provide this exclusive content for you and appreciate any donations made to the FTA to help keep these episodes coming at you. And if you want all the content, become a GRT Network full member to get exclusive content before everyone else and access to special discounts and giveaways through our amazing global partners. Thanks guys, see you next episode.